Tommy and Gus continue to make their way to the next town, and at one point, Gus notices some purple flowers and makes mention of it. And Tommy lets him know that those flowers usually indicate that the sick have been there or are nearby. Right before they get to town, Tommy makes camp in an old school bus that he usually hides out some items in. And the item that he needs is his meds. And Gus actually knew that he had meds in the bus because he could smell it. He mentions this to Tommy, and Tommy had no idea that he also had a heightened sense of smell. Tommy takes his meds, though, and the two are eating under the stars, and Gus says to him, Are you really going to leave me with that family? And Tommy says, Don't ask questions that you don't want the answers to, kid. It's kind of a downer. So, to boost Gus's spirits, Tommy says, Hey, you know what we do tomorrow? We go to the market. And you know what's at the market? A train that is heading to Colorado. This definitely boosts Gus's spirits before he goes to sleep. But when he does so, he has a nightmare that he wakes up in the bus and he's all alone in the dead of winter. And he's yelling, Jep, Jep, because that's what he calls Tommy. Tommy's last name's Jeppard, but Tommy's not answering. And when Gus wakes up, he's very relieved that the first thing he sees is Tommy packing up to go. And Tommy knows that you can't just walk into the market with a hybrid child. So what he's done is he's made him a helmet. And he tells Gus, we're going to pretend that you're a regular boy pretending to be a hybrid so you don't attract any unwanted attention. He tells Gus, we have to do this because the last men, the guys that tried to snatch you at the visitor center, they're going to be there and they're going to be on the lookout. So don't do any weird deer shit. Gus takes the helmet that Tommy's made him and they start walking towards the market. But Gus starts making light of the situation and Tommy has to stop him and say, kid, this is no laughing matter. This is serious. If you don't blend in, you're not going to make it. He comes up with a set of rules that Gus has to abide by. The main one being, if somebody thinks he's a hybrid, start talking, because no one's ever seen a talking hybrid before. The other main rule is to keep his ears under control. They then make their way to the market, and Gus is pretty scared of all of the soldiers that he's seeing, because he thinks that they're the last men. Tommy reassures him, though, you don't have to be scared of them. Just keep walking. He then bribes a guard with AA batteries as to not search them, and they get in the market. And it's a little sensory overload for Gus. He is mesmerized by everything he's seeing in there. At one point, Gus actually gets away from Tommy, and he finds free samples for apples, and he starts going in on them. To the point where the person has to say, you gotta pay for that. And Tommy ends up finding him, paying off the debt, but grabbing him and saying, alright, kid, you gotta stop eating like that. It's weird. Here, sit down on this bench. I'm gonna go get your train ticket. Do not move, do not talk to anybody, don't do a thing until I come back. And when Tommy goes to the ticket booth, he's surprised to learn that the price of the ticket has gone up. So he has to bargain with the guy, give the last of his MRE tokens and an extra pair of shoelaces in order to get Gus's ticket. But when he gets back to the bench, Gus is nowhere to be found. Curiosity got the best of Gus and it started off by looking at a map of Colorado, but then he heard some kids laughing and he decided to follow them out. And just like Gus, these kids are dressed up like hybrids but unlike his friend rusty these kids aren't very friendly and gus finds this out when they're playing a carnival game and they're using some very anti-hybrid language and then all of a sudden they notice gus and they're not the only group that's noticed gus gus has unknowingly created some unwanted attention there's a girl that's following him as well and when he gets scared of the group of kids he backs up right into the girl and he just blurts out i'm just a regular human boy i can talk And she chuckles and says, I can see that. She then touches Gus's ears, and when he gives a reaction, it confirms her suspicions that Gus is a hybrid. She asks him, are you here alone? And Gus lies and says, yes. Okay, well, follow me. And he starts to, but then Tommy intercepts, grabbing him and scolding him for running off. He tries to plead his case, saying that she was helping him, but Tommy doesn't really want to hear it. And the girl, seeing Tommy grab Gus just disappears. Now it's worth mentioning that this girl came from an amusement park that's not too far away, and she lives there with a bunch of other kids. They use the VR simulations in the park to train for combat, and one day they're doing so when all of a sudden, an emergency alert goes off saying there's a hybrid in distress. Animal army, to your stations. And that hybrid is Gus. And this girl, who appears to be the leader, says to the group, alright folks, you know what to do. So this girl's going to have to wait to get Gus alone again because Tommy and Gus are headed to the train. But as they're standing in line, Gus says to Tommy, hey, those soldiers over there, they have your medicine. And it's a bunch of soldiers loading up some crates to go to a supply train. And Tommy's in desperate need of some pills. He tried to get some earlier at the doctor in the market, only to find out that that doctor was shut down for whatever reason. So he says to Gus, "Uh, hey, we have one more thing to do. And him and Gus go and break into the supply car. And with the help of Gus, they're able to locate the box that the meds are in. 
but they're caught. Although Tommy makes really quick work of that soldier, and after grabbing the meds, they get out of there. But as they're fleeing, they get caught by another soldier, and this guy has a shotgun. Tommy, though, fights him off, but the gun blast goes off, and it forces Gus's ears to twitch, and the guy notices that Gus is a real-life hybrid. So Tommy is forced to knock him out. But at this point, Tommy knows that he has to get Gus on that train ASAP, not just because it's leaving in a few minutes, but because they're close to getting their cover blown. So Gus and Tommy run towards the train, and Tommy puts him on the step. But then all of a sudden, the soldier that was knocked out has woken up and alerts everybody that that child right there is a hybrid. Tommy and Gus end up getting arrested. Tommy and Gus are blindfolded and are escorted through the woods when all of a sudden, the soldiers that are escorting them are attacked out of nowhere. Tommy goes to protect Gus, and out of the woods, those people that were dressed up in the animal garb that watched Tommy and Gus head down the chairlift save them. And they reveal themselves, and it's the kids from the amusement park. But as Gus and Tommy were being escorted through the woods, at a base not too far away, a soldier approaches General Abbott and says, Sir, I think we found her. And General Abbott tells him, Tell the men to get ready to move. And it just so happens that General Abbott has one of those flyers that was dumped on Gus and his father years ago for that preserve that was promising medicine and shelter. Now, over with Dr. Singh, he has taken over the medical practice. And he mentions into his recorder that he has regained the love of medicine, helping people. Yet every day when he goes to find a cure, he's reminded why he quit. And that's because the questionable experimentation that was going on to find a cure was done so on hybrids. Not just hybrids, but children hybrids as well. Dr. Singh ends up getting his first shipment of medical supplies from the soldiers, but when he opens it up, it's nothing but medical supplies. There's no vaccine, there's no vials, there's nothing. And he is really frustrated about that. This burden is weighing on him, and the next day when Ronnie reminds him that they have a party at a neighbor's house for Survivor's Day, he doesn't want to go. It's not just because he doesn't like parties. He tells Ronnie, you're not 100%. But she reminds him that the last vaccine hasn't worn off yet. And if they don't go, it's going to raise a bunch of red flags. They get into a little bit of a fight about the situation where Ronnie says to him, we both know why the medicine you're giving me isn't working right now. And it's because you're not following the steps that the last doctor gave you, i.e. experimenting on hybrids. This really pisses off Dr. Singh and Ronnie can tell. So she says, but if there is a humane way to do it, you're the guy to do it. Either way, though, they head off to the party, and one of the reasons they feel the need that they have to go is because the last guy who blew off a party ended up getting his house burnt by the community. So they come up with a code word to get out of there, just in case something happens. They go to the party, they're having as good of a time as you can, they're playing charades, but the whole time, Dr. Singh is keeping a close eye on his wife's pinky, and when it acts up, he covers it with his own hand and gives the code word to her to get out of there. But before they can... The host of the party makes a speech about his wife who died from the sick. And right after that speech, the same host drops a jar of tomatoes, and as he cleans it up, that really nosy neighbor that everybody has and calls Karen behind her back is trying to help him out, and she notices that his pinky is twitching. He tries to play it off like it's nothing and everybody's had some drinks, but everybody gets freaked out. They back up from him, they cover their mouth with bandanas, and they strap him to a chair. And this Karen, who is in charge of the neighborhood watch, go so far as to hand Dr. Singh a test to administer right on the spot. So Dr. Singh does it, and it comes up positive for the sick. So the group of neighbors end up taping him to this chair, heading out of the house, and then lighting the house on fire. And they all just watch it burn, knowing that their neighbor is inside. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought this sucked. Make sure to be nice in the comment section. If you don't see the next video up in the end screen there, I'll get it up in a few days not to worry. And I have merchandise, you know? So go buy a mug or something. It's never too early to think about Christmas gifts, folks. Once again, thank you for checking out this recap.